Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel and into another crock pot dinner casserole dinner video. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Sue. We'd love to have you as part of our family. If you are just now coming across my channel, I hope you subscribe and stick around. It greatly means the world to me. Uh, thank you guys who keep coming back and watching my videos. So first up, we are having crock pot chicken and gravy. We'll have that with mashed potatoes on the side, but as you can see here, I just put some frozen chicken breast into my crock pot, and we're going to get to cooking this chicken, and then we're going to shred it up, and I'm going to share with you how we're going to do that. So first things first is what I like to do is I like to get with this dish because um, we're talking about gravy here. What I'm going to do is go ahead and cook this chicken on high for two or three hours just to get it done and to where I can shred it and then it looks like that as you can see and what I'm gonna do is drain all of that juice out of there shred my chicken up and then I'm gonna start adding the good stuff to it um, I'm a big fan of letting the crock pot do the work for you so I have strained it that's what my chicken looks like and into that chicken mixture I'm gonna be putting a can of cream of chicken into the crock pot and two packets of brown gravy mix yes I know a lot of people use chicken gravy my um, children love the brown gravy so that's the reason why it goes in there like that um, and then I'm gonna stir that all around and we are going to let that uh, get all thick and lovely I don't add any water into the with the brown gravy packets per the instructions because of that cream of chicken there's really no need for it so then I'm just gonna cover that back up cook it on high for maybe another uh, 45 minutes to an hour and then it's done you serve it over rice or potatoes like we did next up is Frito pie uh, here I am showing you the instruction uh, or the instructions girl the ingredients okay I'm showing you the ingredients which I take two cans of um, apparently I take three cans three cans of chili beans and I'm just going to layer that on the bottom of this casserole dish okay now you can add in whatever ingredients that you guys would like um, I always add in a pound of hamburger with one packet of taco seasoning and then I add Rotel to that as well as a can of tomato paste um, and I do that just because my kids don't really like things that spicy and this is just a way to kind of even that taco seasoning out to where they don't complain because it's too hot um, or they don't want to eat it because it's too hot let me tell you this is the first time I've made this recipe and uh, my family loved it and they want to eat it like every day so then I'm just taking the hamburger mixture there and I'm just going over the top of the beans there and of course you guys know if you guys watched my last video um, we're putting cheese okay we're adding all of the cheese I had a little bit left over in that one bag and I I think I added an entire oh maybe I don't do I I'm pretty sure I probably do just add the entire bag sure did um, so that's about three cups of cheese over the top of that but if you guys watch my last video y'all know already my family likes cheese um, and so then we just cut up some tomatoes I'm not a big fan of lettuce once it gets warm and wilted so you can by all means add that to your Frito pie bowls um, we didn't we just had tomatoes and then the Frito chips which I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like uh, this dish goes into the oven about 350 degrees for about 30 minutes just enough to get that cheese melt melted and those beans warmed up I mean you guys know how your oven works I don't really time anything I know that's bad even when I make cake I don't time it um, and that's what it looks like when it comes out of the oven all the cheese is nice and um, lovely and you just add a little bit of that to your bowl some sour cream um, this is one of the kids' bowl and some of them Frito chips and you just dip away friends you just dip away and it's awesome um, here we are what are we doing here we're having a potato and um, smoked sausage smoked sausage I don't know why sausage is such a hard word for me to say but it is okay so anyway you're gonna start with a uh, baking dish Pyrex that's a Pyrex dish right there 
Um, and you're going to put some butter in the bottom of it. Butter. Okay, you're going to add the butter. And then I just chop up, I mean, depending on how much you're trying to feed, okay, here, you want to just make sure, I always ha like to have a nice layer at the bottom. Um, you know, we feed five people on most days, so this is plenty of potatoes for us. But if you're only making two and you're making a dish half the size, of course, you don't want to um, chop up ten potatoes like I did. I can't even tell you how many potatoes is in there. I just you know me I just chop stuff up I just add stuff in you know this is not a traumatic situation you guys use your own best judgment on how many potatoes you're gonna need okay that's just the way that it goes um, so anyway so I just made a nice little layer in the bottom of that dish using all these potatoes um, I think this is the last one I put in there so these are really big potatoes too so I might have only put about six in there um, I'm not I'm not keeping count but you guys can see what's up um, and then I have two packages of sausage, so I'm just going to go ahead and use both packages. Um, I normally like getting the Eckridge big uh, thing of uh, Polish sausage, but the store didn't have it. Um, so all they had was one pack of this and one pack of that, so I just got these two packs. Normally that big giant one, it's about eight bucks or so, and I use about half a pack at a time. So I figured these four little links here would be about the same. Um, and again, like I said, we are feeding five people. So, I mean, if you're only feeding two, you're only going to need one pack. You know what I'm saying? But this is something my family loves and they will go in for seconds and thirds and they'll, they'll eat it until it's all gone. So, uh, you just want to put some salt and pepper on that bad boy, some garlic salt. I don't do garlic powder. I don't like the taste of garlic powder. I prefer garlic salt, but if you are watching your salt intake, y'all, you might want to relax on that uh, garlic salt. Don't get carried away, okay? Don't get carried away. Um, and next up, I am, again, I'm watching my calorie intake. So, and I like to make sure that my kids get at least one set of really good vegetables in their diet uh, at least three times a week. So, this big old bag of California blend, um, vegetables here. I, uh, I, we probably have this as a side at least three or four times a week. Um, it's something that my kids will eat. I can just spread it out. I put a little, the same three ingredients, salt, pepper, and garlic salt on it. Um, and as you've seen, I sprayed the bottom of that little pan down, um, with some olive oil spray, but uh, this is the way that we get vegetables in at my house. Um, it's just part of it. You know what I mean? We love it. Uh, and if it's not this, it's usually either green beans or corn or something along those lines. But, um, since we were already having roasted potatoes, uh, I figured we'd just roast these bad boys up too. So that's what we did. And there is your plate of goodness right there. That's one of that's one of my kids' plate. That's how much they like that dish. Okay, moving forward. What is this? I don't remember what I cooked this night. But this has to be, oh, you know what this is? This is um, shredded barbecue chicken. Um, and for this recipe, I did go ahead and thaw my chicken out. Most of the time, I do not do that. Most of the time, I put the chicken straight into the crock pot, frozen. But today, for some reason... I pulled the bag out and then I was going to get it started and I went probably to walk. I walk every, every day that I can um, and I forgot about it. So by the time I got back to it, it was probably just thawed out. You know what I mean? So uh, whenever I deal with raw chicken, I always cut all the fat and the little nasty bits off of the chicken um, because I, this is probably the reason why I don't like messing with raw chicken and why I do it frozen is because I don't like to touch the chicken. Anybody else out there like that? Um, I could put on some gloves and do it, but then that would be weird and you guys might think that I'm a freak. So, um, as you can see, I, I did what I had to do because the chicken was already thawed, but most of the time it would go frozen into my crock pot so that I could shred it up and just tear off shred off the uh, extra bits of nasty, you know what I'm saying? You guys get it, right? Um, anyway, so barbecue sauce over the top of that. I probably That's a big old container of barbecue sauce, and I probably put almost a half of the bottle on it. 
and then I'm just going to set that on high for about four hours and let it do its thing in there. And then I decided that I needed some coleslaw in my life. So I'm pretty sure I made my husband run to the store and get this coleslaw. I can't remember. What you want to do, um, because I'm watching my calorie intake, uh, what you want to do, or if you don't want to make it ca lower calorie, what you can do is use heavy whipping cream, which is what I normally would use if I wasn't watching my calories. But um, I'm using mayonnaise. I put a little splash of vinegar in there. You want vinegar in your coleslaw to kind of break down the, the crunchiness of your coleslaw. And I just added two little teaspoons of sugar and some Hellman's because Hellman's is life. I'd rather go without the heavy whipping cream and use milk. That's skim milk right there, or 2%. Um, and instead of going without the mayonnaise. But the mayonnaise and the heavy whipping cream together in a combination of that really does make your coleslaw a little bit more creamy. So if you're not watching your calorie intake like your girl is, okay, then what you want to do um, is use heavy whipping cream in replace of that milk and it will be the best uh, coleslaw you ever eaten. Trust me, I know. Okay, so after I get all this mixed up, what I like to do is I don't like adding too much mayonnaise to it. I like my coleslaw to be the perfect, you see that I'm tasting it because it's got to be perfect, okay? We got to love it. We got we to gotta have what we have, okay? So we got salt and pepper there. What I like to do is after I get all of these ingredients mixed up, instead of keep adding stuff to the mixture, I'm going to go ahead and pop that into the refrigerator and let it do its thing. And then I can always, uh, there's my barbecue chicken. You can always come back to that coleslaw and add extra ingredients. I'm showing you that plate right there because my family ate that on a bun and I just ate the chicken without the bun. Um, so the last dish that we got for this week is uh, pepperoni pasta, crock pot pepperoni pasta. So into the pot you're going to put um, your noodles, okay, those are penne noodles, and then I add one jar of pizza sauce to that, and as you can see right here, I'm going to uh, cut up half of this pepperoni and just sprinkle it in there. You want to make sure you leave enough of the pepperoni that you can add it to the top layer um, at the end. So just be mindful of that whenever you're cutting up your little pepperonis. I just like cut them up into four little triangles, you know, into force or whatever. But there is uh, the pepperoni, you're putting it in there. And then what you're gonna do next is add a pound of hamburger to that. And then you're going to stir that all about. Oh changed my mind. Uh, we're adding cheese, of course. That's mozzarella cheese, and I'm going to add that in there, okay? And then you're going to mix that all about, and then you're going to add on top of that the next layer of pizza sauce, your cheese, and your pepperonis on top. I would suggest cooking this bad boy on low for about three hours. Um, and if you don't like the way noodles come out in the crock pot, I would suggest cooking your noodles on the stove first. Um, but that is about it. That's like going to be the end of the video. As you can see here, I'm just layering that pepperonis all on top of that cheese, girl. The cheese. So I used about three cups of cheese here too. Um, if you don't like that much cheese, by all means, don't use that much. Um, and that's going to be it. Cook it on high. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you are new here, hit that subscribe button and let me know in the comments if you like these videos so I know to keep making them. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.